Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Jesus preached this a very interesting message concerning the kingdom of God. He brought to earth a kingdom, not a religion. He said to the people that the kingdom of God has arrived. That was his announcement. Not it's coming, but it has arrived. So he was, he was really stating to us that the kingdom of God is already on earth when he arrived. He brought it with him. What is the kingdom? The kingdom of God is the governing rulership and influence of God on earth. In other words, heaven is God's territory. It's where God's throne is. And throne means a place of power. That's where the government of God is. Kingdom of God means the influence or the authority of that kingdom impacting territory that's the kingdom the word dom is from the word dominion the word king means ruler so kingdom means the ruler that dominates a territory so when christ says repent matthew 4 17 he says repent for the kingdom of heaven has arrived he was saying change your thinking repent means to change your mind because the kingdom, the rulership influence of God in this domain has come to earth. So it is here, he brought it back. And I used to turn back because it used to be here in the Garden of Eden before Adam lost it. Now, Christ said to the disciples, the kingdom of God is with you, but shall be in you. We're going to study that a little later as to how important that concept is but he was saying to them that it is it was among them and then he began to function in the kingdom in the rulership of God on earth then he makes a statement which is very critical and basic to understanding the kingdom of God it's found in Matthew let's read this verse again it says in Matthew 16 verse 19 Christ is speaking he said, I will give you the keys, and there's a plural there, of the kingdom of heaven. Not to, but of. Reminder again. He says, I will give you the keys. There are a lot of different ones of them. <laughs> okay, there's not just one key. There are many keys. Of doesn't mean two. It means many of explore. It's like moving into a house with many rooms. All the rooms are locked. And so if you get one key to get in the house, you ain't got the keys to get to the house. So to have the keys of something means that you've got keys to get into all the rooms. So Christ is saying the kingdom of God is like a house. It's like a big house with all these different rooms and all the different things that you need in it. And the Bible says it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But getting into the rooms, he says you got to know something keys now we all know that the next statements indicate the power of those keys the next statement says what whatever you bind on earth that means whatever you lock up on earth heaven locks up whatever you loose or unlock on earth heaven will unlock or loose so he's saying that the way the kingdom of God works is <clears throat> and I'm still trying to, to fathom this all of heaven Lord have mercy everything in heaven is available to you on earth <laughs> but you determine how it gets here isn't that incredible so keys then represent a few things and we talked about these this morning I think it might be helpful to briefly reinforce it now, the key to the keys is knowledge. Let me define the keys for you. 
write this down if you were not here this morning uh, the keys are systems principles and laws that function or operate in the kingdom of God every government has principles and laws by which it functions the kingdom of God is no different so when Christ says I will give you the keys of the kingdom he said I'm going to give you precepts and principles I'm going to give you laws to use to make certain things happen for you in the kingdom of God so the most important thing is is then in life is for you to 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 know the laws or the principles so that you can apply them and use them therefore the key to kingdom keys is what knowledge of the truth now this is very important the key to kingdom keys is knowledge of the truth uh, let me just go back for a second I want to go back for a second here because I want you to see the difference between ignorance and knowledge all right so let's let's take a look then at keys the key to them uh, can I have a bunch of keys please can I borrow a bunch of keys I want you to see how dangerous it is for you to be ignorant okay this gentleman just gave me a bunch of keys these are not my keys neither they yours now if I gave these keys to you just freely give them to you here yeah. matter of fact if he gave them to you it says here and then he left you just walked away what would happen you still lost eh? you got the keys in your hand now there's a key for a car you don't know what car it is out there so now you gotta go experimenting that could take 10 years and then you die while you're doing it okay there might be a house key on here but you don't know where that house is in this country so here you are you got I mean the man gave you actually a house the power to a house access to a house rights to a house but you don't what know how to use the keys so you have a bunch of keys in your hand the keys represent houses cars probably represent business they represent all kinds of maybe a, a vault with a with a million dollars in it in other words you could have a lot of wealth in your hands and still die starving what is the secret between these keys and all that wealth knowledge are well, you getting smart the secret between all these keys and all that wealth is not singing it's not lighting candles it's not dancing in the spirit see I get dance in the spirit but the keys and still don't get nothing Hallelujah. I love you Lord but I'm still broke oh father I just praise you I love you I pray but I still don't know in other words religion doesn't help you even these religious activities don't get the stuff open so the key watch this the key to the keys <laughs> see the key, keys got a key <laughs> and the key to the keys is what knowledge about them keys you need to know about the keys not just know you got them you got to know what they are how they work and what they open so I'm gonna give you the foundation of my teaching right now the answer to my whole teaching tonight is this I got all this wealth in my hand this man gave me his house his car his bank vault you know his business I got them all but I'm still poor, depressed, broke, and frustrated. So what's my greatest enemy right now? Ignorance. And that's it. That's the bottom line for the keys. Doesn't matter how you cry, you can't find the keys. You can cry all you want. You, you, these keys don't respond to crying. 
So the gi, the kingdom gi, is his knowledge. We read a scripture this morning, Luke 18, and I just want to remind you of it. Christ talked about how hard it is to enter the kingdom of heaven if you've already been operating by another system. Because the keys, you've got to learn them. All right? And it's difficult to enter or to explore the kingdom of God because the nature of the, these keys in the kingdom are very opposite to what you're used to. Also, the kingdom of God uh, uh, cannot operate if there's ignorance. So what the people don't know is what's killing them. It's, it's, it's what I'm talking about believers. Uh, our ignorance is our number one enemy. Don't ever forget that. And number three, the danger of the fallen nature of man is dealing with reasoning all the time. So the kingdom of God is difficult. You can have the keys of the kingdom in your hand and still have a problem because you keep reasoning with the old reasoning from the world. Uh, have you noticed that there, there are no two keys in the world alike? Even the ones on this bunch, they're all different. And sometimes they look similar, but there's a little difference in the way they're designed because all keys operate differently. The same thing is true about, true about the kingdom of God. The principles and the precepts of God, they operate differently. And this, is, this astounded me as I studied the word of God. Because in one case, Jesus healed, I mean, cast out a demon with just his word. Another case, he cast out a demon with a, with a declaration, a statement. Then the other place they said he cast a demon with the finger of God. I don't know what that means, but it must mean that he just, you know, pointed and they left. Uh, and different ways he cast out demons. Well, you remember one time the disciples were wanting to cast out a demon, couldn't cast out the demon. And then he came and says, what's your problem? And they said, you know, this man bought his son and we can't cast a demon out. And Christ says, well, okay, no problem. He cast a demon out. Afterwards they said to him, why couldn't we cast him out? In other words, we watched you cast out demons. We did exactly what you did. We said what you said, but it didn't work this time. And Christ says, oh, I forgot to tell you, uh, this kind doesn't come out except by... See, he, in other words, the keys look close, but you see, it depends on what lock you're dealing with. Do you see the difference? So, when you listen to these preachers, these teachers, and these fellows, and you know, my, my colleagues on television, they start preaching and teaching, you say, oh, you know, Rod Parsley, and Kenny Copeland, and Kenny Fred Price, and, and Kenny Hagen, all these fellows, and they bless you, and Joyce Myers, you say, oh yeah, I'm going to do what they say, I'm going to just do what they say. Listen, you don't know, it, it, it don't always work that way. You got to learn the keys for yourself. Because the keys can become very complicated. It's not just using words, it can also be the condition of your heart while you use the words. Yeah. And so the, the keys look similar, but you've got to learn them because if you start reasoning, you get in trouble. You've got to learn them, all right? Now, this next statement, the keys work. These are principles, but they work, but they're not always understood. Uh, I was thinking about this. How many of you understand how your television works? Can I see your hand? You understand exactly how it works. You know the intricacies inside that box. Let me see your hand. Anybody know what goes on in that box with, with, with all the details of all the circuits? Okay, we got a technician here. What do you do, sir? He's an electronic expert. Okay, very important. I'm glad you're here. Okay, now, look at the crowd. There's a big crowd of people and only one person knows what, what makes your television work <laughs> that you use every day. Now, there's a principle that makes television work. Am I right, sir? Television works on a principle. There are certain things in there that are in every television. In other words, there is a, a system that television uses to convert the invisible uh, uh, rays, the invisible waves, into visual waves. And that's why it's called television. They are able to convert the invisible waves that are passed through the air there are television waves in here right now, but you need a certain component to convert that wave into visual sight so that you can see the picture. But imagine this. You use TV every day and don't know how the thing works. All you know is when you press a certain button, come on. Now I want you to see something here. Watch this. <laughs> Do you know that there are movies and and, and television programs going on in this room right now. Back and forth over your head. They're, they're right here. And they're coming from a station 
which is probably hooked up to a satellite beam, shooting their, their beams up to a satellite, and there's a, a place where everything is coming from right now. Now, even when you sleep in, that station is sending up its beam. All day, 24 hours a day, these station, these movie, these uh, television houses are sending up their beams 24 hours a day. When you turn it off, they still send it. I'm trying to get you to see something. But guess what? When you bought that television, there was a manual in that box. And the manual told you what to do to activate the system. It says, press on. <laughs> now, suppose you don't know how to press on. Then you can't activate the system. But what's so beautiful is those station houses are still loading up all kinds of television material going up. I mean thousands of hours going up every minute. They have thousands. In other words, whether you get it or not, they still loading it up. What comes in your house depends on you. So what you've got to do is learn the principle of how to turn it on. Now you don't know how it works. See that next one there? The principles work, but you don't always understand them. God said, look, God said, look, uh, you need some oil. You're running out of oil. Okay, I want you to go and collect all the bottles you can, he told the woman, and bring them back. Now, he said, collect empty bottles. As many as you could find. So she went out in the neighborhood and bought all these bottles back. And the prophet Elijah was waiting for her. She came. But she kept coming back, bringing bottles and fill up, fill up the whole place. And then he says, okay, now I want you to do something. I want you to start pouring out of the one that got one little bit left in it. And so she started pouring. Now, you know, the bottle that she had was about to go empty. He told her to bring all these bottles first. You don't understand. What, what kind of kingdom is this? Then when she started pouring, now there ain't nothing in this bottle, you know, except a little bit of oil. This ain't attached to no well, no oil well, uh, that she can see. And that's where you get into problems. See, your, your bank account is attached to the earthly system. And when your banker says you overdrawn, it means you hit the bottom and things dried up. So now you need to, you need to latch into another kingdom that always sending stuff up. <laughs> this woman tapped into a oil well that they didn't know about. The people outside. And she started pouring and the Bible says the oil just kept on flowing. She filled one bucket, she filled another bottle, she filled, and she filled them up. And then all the bottles were filled. And the Bible says when she came to the last bottle, she filled it up and then there was no more bottles. So the oil stopped. Now, if she was smart, I'd have find me a barrel, keep pouring. Find me a truck, I'd keep pouring. I'd find me any, hold your hand for me, keep pouring. Hey, but hold your, in other words, I, see, the, the, the thing doesn't shut off, you shut it off. Whatever you lock, that's the kingdom you live in. Now, imagine, do you know that when this happened, there was an economic crisis in the country. That's why she ran out of oil. The whole country was in farming. Farming in the Old Testament means economic crisis. And in the middle of that, she had too much. And the Bible says she went out and sold oil to her neighbor. And I thought it was a pretty interesting deal, eh? Who she got them empty bottles from? Her neighbors, why? Well, they're empty because they broke too. She said, loan me, in other words, they invested in her by loaning her the bottle, she sold it back to her and made profit. I mean, that's a deal in crisis. In the middle of crisis, she was the richest woman in the city. Because she locked into another kingdom that, that doesn't depend on the earthly realm system. But she didn't understand how that works. So God may say to you, look, if you're down to your last dollar, give it to me. Put it in the ministry. Put it in missions. Give it to someone else. In other words, don't. And, and to you, you're thinking that that's the craziest thing to do. If that's the last you got, you keep it. God said, no. In this kingdom, you don't understand. But turn the TV on by giving that dollar. Release the waves of heaven. 
And so the kingdom concepts can be very confusing if you try to reason them out by earthly knowledge. Uh, I mentioned here that the kingdom principles don't work by emotions and feelings. And so let's go now to the scripture we talked about this morning, Isaiah. Isaiah 55, verse 7. God says, let the wicked forsake his way and let the evil man forsake his thoughts. It's a very important statement here. God says, look, I want you to forsake the way you've been thinking and the way you've been living and the way you've been taught to make it in life. That's why the first words of Jesus in the kingdom was repent. You know, and I can't get over how simple this is. He starts off by saying, change your thinking. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven has arrived. In other words, if you're going to enjoy this kingdom, you got to stop the way you think. Think another way. You got to stop living by the laws that you've been using and find the kingdom secret keys. The way God kingdom works look at the next statement he says for my thoughts are not your thoughts Isaiah 55 verse 8 and my ways are not your ways God says look the way I think is not the way you think and the way I do things my ways are not your ways I think what he's telling us is you've got to relearn everything Adam lost. That's why the Bible is very simple. It says, the just shall live by faith. We shall walk by faith and not by sight. Because there is a way that seems right unto a man, but it's going to what? Bring destruction. In other words, if you keep living the way you're living, you're going to die. Now the question is, you got to analyze, how am I living? Are you depending on the system of the world? And that system already showing you that there's crisis? They can't help you with that system? So he says, look, you've got to learn another way to live. I mean, uh, and I, I keep using this same example because I want you to see how much we've missed it. Christ sitting with his disciples in, in, in the house, they're having a meal. A knock comes to the door. They go to open the door. At the door is the tax collector. And he says, uh, it's time to pay taxes. How many in the house? And they told him. He said, well, I come for taxes. So they came back and they says, Lord, the tax collector is there to pay taxes. They said, we have no money for taxes. That's what they said. Jesus said, oh, of course we do. He says, uh, Go down to the lake and throw it up the line and the first fish you catch, look in its mouth and there's enough for all of us. Now, I told you all this morning in the session that, <laughs> this thing blows my mind, the, <laughs> the king knows the creation. He knows everything in his creation. He made the thing. He knows where the fish is and what they got in their mouth. You think God only knows your job paycheck? To pay your bill, take care. You know, God's looking. He said, the way you all act, you all make me ashamed. You all think I'm limited to your boss and the way he feels about you. And he can fire you today, shut the business down tomorrow morning. He said, is that what you think? You think I am, I am stuck with this one way of handling things? So the Bible says they went, and they threw a line, they caught a fish, opened its mouth, and there was enough for everybody. They brought back and paid the guy. I wonder how many stories God would like to have coming out of you that way. He started saying, you know, you wouldn't believe how God took care of the situation last week. You wouldn't believe it. Say, how? What did he do? You wouldn't believe it. And then you tell me the story. I'll believe it. Because I've already changed my ways of thinking. My job is to get you to change your way of thinking so you can stop depending on your own ways of doing things. Because the kingdom of God, its thoughts are higher than your thoughts and his ways are higher than your ways. So he says, forsake your thoughts. Forsake the way you reason. 
forsake the way you believe the system supposed to work because this kingdom it it can it is contrary in most cases to all the kingdoms now now let's be honest uh, the <laughs> the goals of the kingdom are the same for example paying taxes we got to pay taxes in both kingdoms but the way the money comes for it may be different are you with me they were paying Caesar but God knows where Caesar's money is <laughs> and it ain't in the place that you always expect it to be let me just say something to you that on September 11 money didn't leave the planet still here <laughs> gold didn't leave silver still here imagine all the wealth all the diamonds still on earth I mean September 11 didn't take nothing from the planet everything's still here he just went into hiding and he knows where the secret riches of darkness is he says yeah. so he says what he says my my thoughts are what higher higher he says I want you all to come up a little higher with me come a little higher in your thinking come a little higher think higher than the fear and the frustration and the anxiety and what's going to happen uh, what do I what if I lose this and God said no come a little higher if you live in this higher kingdom you won't have no high blood pressure no loss of sleep no kind of growth in your body you won't die from no frustration if you live with the higher thought and the higher ways of thinking the favorite words of Jesus to his disciples were these words be of good cheer in other words hey rejoice he usually told them that when they were frustrated depressed we have nothing to eat he said be of good cheer storm coming he said be of good cheer <laughs> they're getting ready to sing he said be of good cheer in other words he was always in a higher gear he, this guy he ain't nothing faces this man he says be of good cheer in other words be like me why did he live that way he lived that way pastor because he knew that there was another world that controlled this one let me let, let me let, let me blow your mind let me blow your mind <laughs> this it's tough to teach this because it's it's real but it's it's so unbelievable oil is not only in the ground <laughs> where did this oil come from in this bottle this woman started pouring it didn't come from the, now we think oil is only from the ground God said no there's another world and if you tap into it oil will come from a place you don't know where just enjoy the oil <laughs> but first she needed what she needed some oil first you gotta have something to pour first. She didn't start with an empty jug. Can I suggest to you that God doesn't give you a job for you to live off? Hallelujah. God gives you a job to give you oil so you can pour. That's why your salary cannot, does not and will not pay all your bills can you say amen to that yeah. in other words the minute you get something <laughs> if someone gives you fifty dollars you're supposed to say oh, oh I got something to work with here see you don't go and buy something to eat all of it, fifty dollars worth you say wait a minute I got something to pour here so God is so smart right God says look take ten percent of anything that comes into your hand and get it back in the system <laughs> why he's trying to help you keep the oil flowing trouble starts when you eat the whole 50 cent and say God now I broke God said you really broke you right and no matter how many bottles you bring in here empty you ain't got nothing to start with don't ever eat your last seed one of the kingdom keys is you always plant 
in the time of stress and those 5,000 people was hungry eh? now I want you to watch Jesus now he is God in the flesh you know Christ well let me ask him he was on earth so it was impossible for him to start anything with nothing you get it right only a few of you all get that in other words if you are in heaven then you can start with nothing and get something but in earth the system is you got to start with something <laughs> so in everything Christ did on earth he had to start with something that he already had so he wanted to feed 5,000 people he couldn't just invent bread he says what do you have give me something to start with they said all we have is he said that is enough <laughs> I only need a little bit in this kingdom, you only need a little bit to start. Tell your neighbor, I got that. Yeah, yeah see? I got that. You know, uh, I was telling you about this envelope given to the poor. And, uh, you know, this morning, I told Sister Barbara, I said, Barbara, loan me a dollar. Because my wife took all my money. You know, she took my wallet and her purse this morning in the second service. So I said, I got to give something again. I don't need a lot of money. Just get it in the kingdom. Once you get something in the system, it, it leaves your hand but never leaves your life. And it goes through the system of God. It may go all the way, all the way to China, all the way to Africa, go wherever it goes. Come, when, they, when they come back, it don't come back the same dollar. It come back pressed down, shaking their head. See? So you just got to get it in the system. He says, work, you got to give me something to work with. It's one of the keys to the kingdom. So if you are afraid, brother Fox, then you sit down with your wife and say, okay, now honey, let's make sure, let's secure ourselves. Let's, let's, let's make sure we corner this thing on God. Let's make sure we get something in the system. Boom. Once you do that, heaven is what? Unlocked. It's kingdom. God's ways are not our ways. You don't need a lot to get it to work, but you need something to get it to work the worst thing in the world is to be is broke <laughs> Lord, I, man this thing is beautiful eh? okay let me give you another example this is the last one I give you it's so sweet the woman with the, with the, with the, with the, the two last meals for her son why didn't God wait until she ate them and then send the prophet Couldn't help her. Could not help her. God said, let's catch her while she got two meals left. In other words, she had one last meal for herself. God said, catch her now. Why? She got to have something to start with. Let me tell you something. If you got your last dollar, buy someone's lunch. Don't eat it yourself. Buy it. And sit down and watch them eat it and just smile. And say, uh huh. That's good. Swallow all, swallow all of it, swallow it. Right. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Kiss her and leave. Thank you. Why? She just set you up for kingdom blessing. Now that human reasoning? Human reasoning say, no, uh, this is my lunch, last lunch, I can die after this. <laughs> no. I'm going to live after this. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to live after this when you put it in just say i'm gonna live after this every time you put something in the kingdom of god you say i'm gonna live after this this is securing my future my wife and i that's that, that's our prayer in our in our giving every time i give i say i'm protecting my future that's what i'm doing i'm protecting my future because once you get it in the system it never leaves your life god says my ways are not your ways so so these statements here in isaiah 57 verse 7 and 10 is telling us that there's a way that you know you say what forsake that and there's a way you are thought to think he says what forsake that now if you forsake the way you know and the way you think then what you got to do you got to learn a new way and a new thought so the key then to kingdom living is learning how his keys work and therefore the secret to the way the keys work I call them the ways of the keys 
Proverbs chapter 14 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. God says, I, I, I don't want you to keep going the way you're going because you're going to die. It's going to kill you. The system you use is going to kill you. Uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 and 16. Write it down. Very important verse. It says, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways very important and to keep his commands his decrees and his laws these are all keys then you will live and increase and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess it's a powerful verse eh? God says look in the land Look at, the, look at that land he talks about. He says in the land there's what? Well, in that land there is death and there is destruction. And then there is prosperity and there's life. In, in what land? The same land. This is deep. There's no such thing as a good economy and a bad economy to God. There's always good and bad economy in every place. <laughs> he said, what happens to you depends on the laws, the commands, the decrees, and the ways that you use. Do you see the difference? He said, the same land got prosperity and wealth, and it also has death and destruction. What happens to you is determined by what you do, what keys you use. And then he says, I want you to walk in my ways. My ways means my system, uh, my, my principles, the precepts I lay down. You, you use my keys. If you use my keys, it says then you will what? Increase. And the Lord God will bless you in the same land where every other people may be destroyed. God doesn't fix an economy to bless you. That's the point I'm trying to make. The kingdom doesn't need the other kingdom's economy to bless you. It can bless you with or without it. Because it doesn't work and operate on dependency on that kingdom. So if that kingdom falls apart, God's kingdom still is intact. And matter of fact, it shines brighter. Same land. He says, the key is walking in my ways and keeping my commands and walking in my laws and keeping my decrees and then you will live and increase. So what's the key in that whole chapter, in that whole passage? Learning those laws and those decrees. What's the key to destruction? Not knowing them. So once again, the key is what? Knowledge, eh? Look at this priority Christ lays down. Of the kingdom keys Matthew 7 21 he says not everyone who says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven now when I was studying this the other night I had an illumination experience that means me and the Holy Ghost had a little uh, 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 intercourse it's called revelatory intercourse and when I read this I've read this verse for 30 years I finally understood it last month. That's a long time to be ignorant, eh? Read, read, read this verse. Christ says, not everyone who says to me, look at Henry, <laughs> I know, it, it blew me away. He said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. I hit my button in my computer, check the word enter, and it means to explore. He said, look, you saying I'm your Lord, but how come you're starving? You say I'm your Lord, but you broke. You say, I, the king of the universe, I'm your Lord, and you can't pay your mortgage. Religious people. Look at him. He says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will explore fully the kingdom of heaven. 
In other words, holding the keys in your hand is like holding the Bible in your hand. These are the keys. But you don't know how to use them, what they open, how they open. So you call him Lord, but nothing's working. It's like me bragging to everybody, I've got some keys, I've got some keys, I've got some keys, and I'm starving, hungry, naked, but still saying, I've got some keys. That's what Christians sound like. That's how Christians sound. Christians sound just like that. They got all these keys that can open a million different doors, but they can't get the door. They don't know the number of the doors, so they just so, ah, the Lord is a, he owns the sheep on a thousand, and you can't even eat lamb. <laughs> and we say it all the time, right? My God is an awesome God, and then you broke. I mean, you confusing people. And God is tired of that. I think God has had enough of misrepresentation. In this generation, God's going to find some people. If I got to pour my every ounce of breath and blood out, I'm going to ask God to give me at least something for me to look at before I die. Where I see a group of people who is maximizing the kingdom efforts and messing up the world, making the kingdom of God look big. I want to see that. It works. Look at the rest of this verse. He says, not all who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter, will explore all the rooms in the kingdom of God, of heaven. But only he who what? Does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Getting into all them rooms is beyond just saying, Lord. Yeah. You make him your Lord, you can still starve to death. Uh, there are people in the United States who are illegally there. So they can't demand anything from the government. They got to hide. When you are not a full citizen, you cannot demand rights nor privileges from a government. You got to hide from them. There are people here in the Bahamas who are illegal. They can't demand rights from the government and privileges from the Bahamas constitution. They hide. Now, that's a person who is illegal. What about the person who becomes a citizen of the United States? They, they, you know, they get citizenship, but they don't know the law. They don't know the constitution. They don't know you know, all the rights and privileges, they can still hide, starve, die. They get a passport, they say, hey, I'm a citizen of the United States, but they don't know how to claim anything. Hello? Some of you Bahamians right here, right now, may have claims to things that are yours from the government, but you don't know. For example, the, 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 the day that you worship, you could have that day off, you know. That's legal. Now, if you worship on Saturday, now, you know, to, to those who are Seventh-day Adventists, they tell you straight, I don't work on Saturdays. Why? Their church taught them the law. You know, different law from what you're supposed to know. So if someone asks you to work on Sunday, you say, I don't work on Sunday, they can't make you work. You can say, let me tell you something. The law says that I have a right to freedom of worship. And one day, the law protects me for freedom of worship. But now, if you don't know that, and you get grumbling all day on the job, you're grumbling, you're grumbling. So you get in depression, high blood pressure, cysts, all kinds of things growing in your body, when in fact, you don't know the key. And yet you say, I'm a Bahamian citizen, Lord, 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 Lord. But he says, I still don't know you because you, you don't know the law. You know the Lord, but you don't know the law. To live in the kingdom, you must know the law and the Lord. <laughs> and that's why the scripture we read tonight, which we're going to close on, Jesus said, if any man learns my teaching and keeps them, 
He's like a wise man that builds his house on a rock. Matthew 7, 24. Let's read it. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on rock. Any man who what? Hears these words of mine. That means you've got to now get the information. And then he says, if you what? Apply them, practice. That man is a wise man. Well, wisdom is what? Application. Holding keys is one thing. Using them is a whole new story. Amen. My desire for you, and that's why I tell you, I've been working hard just trying to get you to get this because my desire is for you to, to, to not just have a bunch of keys, but to be able to practice them. And you know, I believe the Lord really prepares his people for the future. Think about it. We started receiving this teaching from January, eh? Yeah, February. And th there wasn't any terrorist action in January. February, March, April, May, June, July, August. There was none. God was saying, tell you what though, uh, those who hear me are going to hear what I'm saying to the earth. And I believe we heard him. He was saying, get ready to lock into this kingdom because some other kingdom is going to fall apart. That's an act of love. To teach us how to live and increase and prosper in the midst of difficulty. That's love. God is saying, look, I want you to learn how to live above all of that. Yes. The kingdom is the only security we have in the world that we have in today. I'm telling you, I am so glad I am in the kingdom of God. Yeah, clap, man. That's, you, you, this is, you don't know what a joy it is to live in a situation where nothing could destroy you. He says that you built your life on my teachings and my words. It's like a man who built his house on rock. Now, you know the same, the same uh, sermon he said the other side, right? He said, if a man doesn't build his life on these things that I teach, these keys, he says, he's like a man who built his house on what? Sand. And then he says what? The wind comes and the waves come and the rain. In other words, all the chaos comes, all the crisis comes, and that house collapses. He says, if you build your house on my principles, my precepts, the wind comes and the rain. In other words, you ain't exempt from the store, from the straw market burning down. When the straw market burned down, it didn't burn around believers. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, when they lay off folks, they lay off some believers. So Christ said, look, it doesn't matter. Once you are built on the kingdom principles, he said, the other people are going to collapse under the weight. Bam! They're going to Go back to drugs and drink and do all kind of stuff. But you, you're going to go from glory to glory. You're going to go from, from faith to faith. Come on, praise him. You're going to, hallelujah. So this is not, there's no such thing as a bad day for a kingdom citizen. There's no such thing as a problem for a kingdom citizen. There's always opportunities. And that's what we have in the kingdom of God. So, uh, let's close on, on what these principles are about, how they work. The word principle, write this down very quickly. I want you to get this. Principle, the word principle is from the word prince, and prince means first. Principle, therefore, is also defined as first law. First law. First law or fundamental law. It also means the base foundational law. So a prince... The word prince means first. That's why when a king has a son or daughter, they are both called prince, prince or princess. It means first in line for the throne. So prince means first. When we use the word principles or precepts, we're talking about the first law that was laid down for something to function. So when the Bible says, if you, I would give you the keys of the kingdom, 
In other words, I will give you the principles by which the kingdom works, which means I will give you what? The original first laws by which God intended the kingdom to work in the earth. That's what you got to learn. So principle means the first foundational laws or original laws to govern and regulate the functioning of a product or created thing. And Christ is saying, I'm going to show you how to, how to regulate and operate in the kingdom of God. I'm going to give you the fundamental laws. The laws are both natural and spiritual. God created the law of gravity. He created the, the, the law of aerodynamics. They're all natural. They're in the natural world. They work. He created the law of growth, how things grow. I mean, plants always grow toward the sun. That's a law. No matter where the sun is, the plant will go toward it and find it. That's a law. It grows toward the sun. The law of fish and water. Fish can't live without water. It's a law. Natural law. You take them out, they die. They malfunction. They quit. Laws. The spiritual laws. Now, what we got to learn then is the spiritual laws and the natural laws. And then we live abundantly. And that's what Christ says he will teach us to do. To live according to the precepts of the kingdom. So, the, the key to living abundantly in the kingdom then is learning the laws, the principles. There's something on my heart I want to just get this out. Religion, religion, religion is so dangerous because religion is an end in itself for most people in other words this is what I do in religion I do these things I go to this mosque I go to this church building I go to this synagogue I go to this Hindu temple I do these rites I bow I pray I do signs I do this I give a little offering I sing I you know whatever I do and then he said okay that's finished Whew. wow I did my duty that's how we handle religion in other words it has nothing to do with our life be honest Religion is something that we go to, do, and then quit, and go back to catching hell. Talk to me. Am I right? That's a religion, and every, the Hindu, the Muslim, the Buddhist, and the Christian, we all do it. We love the religious experience. It's an end in itself. They never sat me down in my religious experience and said, look, here are the 10 laws to live and to live abundantly for the rest of your life. They didn't teach me. Did, did, did they teach you that? Don't talk to me, man. Did, did someone sit you down? Any priest, any pastor, any bishop did that to you? Religion is not interested in your life. They're interested in 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 the pleasure they get from you doing what they say makes them feel egotistically satisfied Christ says to the disciples watch this he said look do you know what he said <laughs> he's after he healed after he cast out the demon of the boy and they asked him why couldn't we do that do you know what he said before that when the man brought the little boy the demon possessed situation the disciples were trying they didn't know the keys so Jesus cast the demon out but before he did it he made a statement which is a statement every every religious leader should make here's a statement how long must I be with you all what does that statement mean I'm trying to teach you something. You better learn this because I leave in. I want you to do this on your own eventually. I don't want you to need me. In other words, I want to teach you some skills. I want to teach you some know-how so that you can, when this happens again, you'll know exactly what to do. 
Man, that's different from religion. They don't, they don't, they don't set you free. You got religions. Okay, you got the Christian religion. They say, don't wear earrings. Don't wear makeup. Wear a long dress. Wear a hat. Don't wear a rouge. Don't wear this. You know, don't wear no jewelry. Okay, that's their problem. Now you got the Muslim. Cover your head. Wear a veil. Let no man see you. Blah, 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 blah. So everybody got their little thing. And everybody poor and dying. And the preacher happy that you look ugly. Well, you know, he feels good. Well, they're doing what I say. Praise. See, and it's quiet, but he feels, he feels egotistically satisfied. It, it feeds his pride. I'm controlling these women. Or they wear veils, they cover themselves like the Hindus and the Muslims. They go, I mean, how come the men enjoy it so much? They don't cover themselves. It makes them feel they're in charge. See, it's not about setting people free, it's about bondage. Let me tell you something. If I teach you to use these keys all by yourself, you don't need me to be there no more. Am I right? If I teach you this is the key for that, this is the key for that, this is the key for that, then I can leave you. So Christ says, how long must I be with you? You better learn the keys fast. I'm getting ready to leave. But I will give you what? I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I will give you how to operate the thing by yourself. Anybody want to learn that? Say, please, Lord, show me the keys. Lord, I want to know. I, God wants you to be able to operate when ain't no pastor, Pastor Richard, Pastor Miles, ain't nobody around. You know what to do, man. You know how to make it work. Amen. That's what the kingdom ministry is all about. It's not about controlling you. I don't want to control nobody. It's too much trouble to control people. I want to set you free. When you get blessed, everybody gets blessed. Can I hear an amen? I mean, if you come into a million dollars, guess what? All of us get to share in that somehow. Believe it. You know, you pay your tithes, the church gets blessed, and you start a business, you hire people, and they, stay there, they get blessed, and you bless the economy. In other words, when you prosper, the whole place prospers. So we rejoice when you learn the keys, so you can give and increase in the land that God sent you to possess. You can increase in the land. Principles are learning the laws that you can live and operate by. And once you learn them, you don't need to depend on nobody to, to, to live your life for you. Yeah? Principles are created to simplify life. <laughs> what's, what's, what's the key? A principle, eh? When, when you go to your house, once you get the house key in your hand, you don't fumble no more, eh? You make life simple. You, once, you, once you find a bunch of keys from the bunch for your house tonight, then you stop fumbling. What do you do? You have confidence when you know you got the key. Confidence. When you sit in your car, thank you. When you sit in your car, what do you do? Once you get your car key, then there's what? There's a sense of control, power, authority. You just shoop, pew. I mean, you don't even go, oh, Father, I hope this thing starts. I just pray, oh, Lord, I believe. I release faith now. No, you just go, pew, pew. Keys simplify life. Once you know it, you got the key. Life is simple. You know, my son here said that he knows how television works, eh? Do you know why you know the television works? I asked him, what do you do? His answer was, I am a technician. In other words, he took the time to study, to learn the keys to the television. He knows how it works, how to fix it. He knows what makes it operate, all the circuits, everything. He knows that. So when you have a problem, you call a guy who knows the keys. What do you do? If you know the keys, you kick the TV. Bam! Bam! Don't we do that? We do it our life. What wrong? How come I can't pay my bills? My mortgage man. You kicking God said, no, stop kicking it. Uh, go learn the keys, man. This thing easy to fix. <laughs> That's why we pay the guy money. We pay him for what? Knowledge of the keys. We don't pay him for the keys, no. The knowledge of them. He got the knowledge. That's what we pay for. We pay for what you know. And Christ says, if you learn what I teach you and then practice it, you'd be like living on a rock. It simplifies life. Principles also protect life. And that's right. And it's very simple. Principles also simplifies decision. If you got principles in your life, you ain't got to be praying too much. <laughs> you pray long when you don't know what key to use. <laughs> Talk 
to me. <laughs> Christ says, feed the 5,000. Peter didn't say, let's have a prayer meeting. Let's pray. Let's believe God how we can learn how to do it. God said, no. Wait, what do you got? There's a key here. Let's just get the key. Let's open the thing and let's feed them. The more keys you learn, the less you got to pray. I mean, think about it, Antoine. You got the key for your car. You don't stand outside the other car. I just pray, Lord, let this key work it. Now listen, wait a minute. You use this key a thousand times. So you don't pray about that. Why? You know the car. You know the key. Now either somebody changed the lock while you was in here, which is very rare, <laughs> or the key works. So making a decision is simple when you know the principles. That's what Christ wants us to be. I'm excited about what we're going to learn here. Yeah? Principles are created to preserve life and violation of principles brings destruction. If you violate a principle, you destroy yourself. Now some of you are wondering why I got lighthouses behind all of these sections here on keys. It's because principles are like lighthouses, you know, just like a lighthouse. You heard the story about the man who was doing exercises in the ocean. I wrote this in one of my books. You should read that book. I think the book on, I think it's the book on, uh, on uh, releasing your potential. Get a copy of that one, read it. It's like lighthouses, eh? A lighthouse, we got one out here in the, in the harbor. Lighthouses don't, don't move, you know, they don't move. So there's a captain who was doing a war exercise with another captain, and they were in the fog up in the north, around in the Alaskan Ocean up there where the fog gets very thick. And, uh, and one of the ships got into the fog and couldn't see the other one. And they lost contact. And, and then all of a sudden he saw the lights. He saw this light, and the captain, he said, rare admiral, you know, he, he, uh, he told, he sent, sent a message with his light. He says, uh, you, are, you are on a collision course with me. Please change your course immediately, or we're going to collide. And then the, the message came back through the fog in the light. It says, you change your course, or we're going to collide. So the admiral sent back another message. He says, look. I am Rear Admiral Captain XYZ from the, from the commander, blah, blah, blah. He gives his whole credentials. He said, if you don't change your course, I am going to be forced to fire on you or we will collide. And the message came back a few minutes later and says, if you don't change your course, you're going to collide. By this time, the admiral is completely irate. He is mad. Who, who dare defy my authority? I am the great, rare, rare admiral, very rare admiral. <laughs> Captain, sir, honorable, right honorable. I mean, the guy, he got ticked off. And he sent a message back. He says, look, I am rare admiral XYZBDXWXYPPSTB. And I have been through X, Y, Z, W, P, P, experiences of war, blah, blah, blah. These are my credits, blah, 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 blah. And I command you to change course or I will crush you. And after a little while of silence, the light came back. The light says, and I am a lighthouse. <laughs> the rare admiral turned his course immediately, quickly. <laughs> What's the point? Principles are like lighthouses. They don't move, they don't change. If you violate them, you get destroyed. Heaven and earth will pass away, he says. But my word is like a lighthouse. You learn my word, you learn my precepts, you get my principles. He says, I don't care what's happening around you. If you get yourself lined up to my principles, you are going to remain steady, like a, like a house built on a rock. Is that good news? That's good news. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you once again for listening to this message, as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, 
or to join us at one of our live events around the world.